As we continue our studies of glucose metabolism in Chapter 13, let's now turn our attention to the consideration of the storage and release of glucose. Recall that we store glucose in the form of the polymer glycogen, a highly branched molecule. The primary storage facility is in the liver, but it can be stored in other tissues and primarily muscle. We start with glucose 6-phosphate and that gets converted to glucose 1-phosphate. In other words, we move the phosphate from the number 6 to the number 1 position through the action of the enzyme phosphoglucomutase, a readily reversible reaction. Now we're going to activate glucose 1-phosphate before we add it to the glycogen polymer. Let's think for a moment of why we need to do this. Recall that we're creating order. We're adding glucose to a growing polymer and that's going to create order and that will be highly unfavorable energetically speaking. So we're going to have to input some energy. What we're going to do is store that energy in the glucose molecule so that it's on site as it were when we get ready to add glucose to our chain. So let's see how this process works. Here we have glucose 1-phosphate color-coded in purple and we're going to transfer a UMP group from UTP to that end phosphate on glucose 1-phosphate. You want to pay close attention to the color coding here. So we're going to transfer in black the UMP from UTP and that will release the end phosphates from the UTP molecule and that will come off as inorganic pyrophosphate in red. So in the process we're going to break one phosphoanhydride bond on UTP and form a new phosphoanhydride bond on our product which will give us UDP glucose. So here's our final product, UDP glucose. Notice the purple portion of the molecule that represents our starting material of glucose 1-phosphate and the portion is black is the, U, is the UMP that we transferred from UTP. So even though our product is a UDP glucose, we only transferred UMP from UTP and we released inorganic pyrophosphate. Since we exchanged one phosphoanhydride on UTP, for a new phosphoanhydride bond on our product, the net change in free energy is pretty close to zero. So there's nothing that would make this an irreversible reaction, except for one more thing. Remember we released inorganic pyrophosphate, that's in red here, and there's one more phosphoanhydride bond in that molecule. And so when we break that molecule, we end up with two molecules of inorganic phosphate. We break one more phosphoanhydride bond and that releases about 33 kilojoules per mole of energy. That enzyme is inorganic pyrophosphatase. And because of the release of that extra energy from that phosphoanhydride bond, that makes this overall process, the formation of UDP glucose, irreversible. This is a very important theme and we'll see this repeatedly as we look at these different metabolic pathways. So here's our end product, UDP glucose. It's charged up with stored energy and we can use that to form our polymer. The enzyme that catalyzes the addition of that glucose unit to the end of the chain is glycogen synthase. It will transfer the glucose with the release of UDP. We need a separate enzyme to create those branch points. Those are translycosylase enzymes. What about retrieving the glucose after we've stored it? That process is referred to as glycogenolysis, that is, lysis of glycogen. And you might think it would be a simple hydrolysis reaction, but instead it's a phosphorolysis. The enzyme is glycogen phosphorylase, and instead of adding water to break off a glucose molecule, it's going to add inorganic phosphate, so our product is glucose 1-phosphate. We can use that mutase enzyme again, remember it's readily reversible, to make glucose 6-phosphate. If we're the liver and we need to transport that glucose to other cells, we're going to clip off that last phosphate and produce glucose because remember we have glucose transporters, we don't have glucose 6-phosphate transporters. And glucose will be sent through the bloodstream to other cells that need that nutrient. 
If instead we're within the cell, maybe within a liver cell or some other tissue, we might want to take that glucose 6-phosphate and use it directly in glycolysis. In that case, we're going to enter glycolysis at step 2. We've skipped step 1. So here's another affirmation of how in glycolysis, because we can skip step 1, that's not a good control point, even though that's an irreversible reaction. In this case, we've saved ourselves the cost of 1 ATP in the process of glycolysis. In our next video lesson, we want to review the process by which we convert the 6-carbon sugar glucose to the 5-carbon sugar ribose. And we also want to consider what are the benefits of this pathway other than simply the production of the sugar ribose.